part of being a professional audio engineer is being able to pull off a great mix on any desk on any show. Whether you're handed an X32, an Avantis, or a PM7, those are three desks that I use regularly. And although I'm often mixing bands and need to be able to deliver and create spaciousness with effects, I feel like that's the biggest change between working on these desks, believe it or not. All three of them have gain, EQ, routing, um, and channel count's gonna dictate what size desk I get, but the quality of the effects is I really think one of the biggest changes. Well, I thought about, well, how could I offset this and actually use the VSTs I use here in my studio, I know and love on my computer, and I can take them onto any desk that I work with. And that's what I wanna share with you today, this new workflow I've created and I'm gonna be testing out in the coming gigs with Gig Performer. I already use this software for my guitar and bass rig, and I thought, why can't I use it at front of house? It's a wonderful tool. I'm not gonna show you a baseline template to be able to use four VSTs and have every knob at your fingertips. And you may be asking, well, why can't I just use a wave server or something like Live Professor, which is also a great piece of software? Why I particularly like Gig Performer is here in this main setup, I've got four sets of effects. I've got a hall, a plate, a spring, and a quarter note delay is that I don't actually have to navigate and go to the plugin universe interfaces. I've pre-mapped everything to these knobs. So I'm not having to click around and change it between plugins to do stuff on the fly. I've already set that up here in the wiring view where my hall is actually CLA Epic. It's got a bunch of stuff in here, but I'm only using the hall on this mode. I've gone over here to the panel and I've mapped everything to here in this view. So now I can adjust the pre-delay up to a predetermined value. I've actually maxed it out at a, around 150 milliseconds. I could change the mod, the reverb time, the high pass filter, among other things. So I've built a custom interface to only have access and only show me the things that I need in real time, which is awesome. So I'm gonna show you how I set that up, what it sounds like, some of the other metering and functions I have going on here. I'm excited to share with you Gig Performer. It's a wonderful tool and you can use any VST as your virtual effects rack on no matter what desk you have. A quick caveat on the routing, uh, in this demo, I have an audio file player here that's just gonna play a drum loop and push it out all to the effects, but you'll be taking the audio in on your interface and pushing that into the effects mixer right here. So that would look like if you're on an X32, you've got your mix buses, so you can have your last um, three or four or so, so mix bus 9, 10, 11, 12, you would go to your routing tab and have them map to your outputs and then go to the card and they can choose your card outputs to push those out to the card. They can connect it over USB, send it into Gig Performer and then back out into your desk and those would return in on a set of channels. This could be on Dante Virtual Sound Card or through any other USB protocol to pass, uh, pass in between your computer and the console. Uh, just know for this demo, I'm just gonna be playing an audio file into it just so we can uh, stay focused on the user interface here. All right, so let me jump back over, over to this panel. This is kind of your home base in Gig Performer. On the left, you have what are called rack spaces. And these racks uh, ho uh, host what's happening uh, with all the controls. And I have another one here called Scratch because at the end, we're gonna build this from scratch in a very simplified way. But this is what I've built out. So if I click here on the edit button, on the left-hand side, we have basically similar to like a website builder, all these DIY things. I've got a red knob, got an old school knob, I got green sliders. And all I did was click and drag things in. So here's a shape, I've dragged it in, I made a red square. Then I dragged a knob on top of it. So another knob. So right here I can click on it and I go over here to general, general, and I've clicked show value in caption because it's actually gonna map a value. I've gone here to the plugin on the right and I've named it hall, and I clicked on hall PRD. So that's hall pre-delay, which is mapped to here on this plugin that I've right clicked and renamed hall. And then that's on the hall setting and there is pre-delay right here. So that's 134.9. So now if I go back to the panel, I change this all the way down to 8.8, .8, go back to the plugin and it's here. So it's gonna change it. It's, so it's like a little remote control. Think of it almost like a DCA for all these individual parameters that are right here in one spot. So I just made this big enough to have a two RU panel that had all the controls on top. 
And then I have a 2RU panel that shows me metering. So right here on the in and out, uh, if I click on edit now, the in shows me the left meter on the pre-FX, uh, left meter on the pre-FX mixer. So we go back to wiring here, and I, this is a built-in thing. It's a 16 by 16 mixer. So on input one and two, I have going to the hall, and that passes out of input one and two. So that way I can have a trim, and I can also mute on the input if I wanted to. Um, and so right here on the panel, the hall in trim is I have my bus that would be feeding that, and I can use that. But if I just want to leave those all at Unity, then adjust my levels here. I can do that if I want. So I have that mapped to the actual uh, pre-effects mixer output level is what's feeding into the unit. And then on the out, these are mapped to the post-effects mixer, which is over here. And that shows me the meters post the effects. And you can see these are also muted because that's right here. I've got mute switches that are mapped to that as well. I can also solo the effects. I'll have you know when I'm about to play this drum loop here, I have a, a copy of it on the, on the dry signal coming into nine and 10. So we're gonna hear the dr dry drum loop, but I'll be able to solo each part, then also uh, mute the effects as needed. Going back to my panel here, I've also made a play and stop button that I've just mounted on this, what I have that's extra space so I can trigger the drum loop. So here it is dry. So we see that flashing here on the input meters on all four, because I would be feeding it, but I have their outputs muted. So my output meters down here are muted. So now let me bring in just the hall. So I have this pretty hot just to make it drastic. The point of this is not to show you here's my perfect hall setting, but just what's available to you in this template and how you can manipulate it. So let me start uh, changing some, some parameters so you can actually hear this change in real time. So kind of a crazy sound, but I'm able to make the reverb time really short if I want to. There is a glitch right now. This should say 1.5 seconds instead of 1.5 milliseconds. Uh, but I can bring my pre-delay back down to something reasonable and adjust these parameters here. I've got a high pass filter on the output. So cool, I'm able to adjust that. So now let's go over to our plate, play with that a little bit. Pretty cool. So that's my plate. And now also I've got, got the spring. And this is a simple unit, a new one for me. It is the tall bird from Benson. All it is, it's got a wet knob and then dwell, which is more like the, the timing of it. And we want the wet all the way up and I'm gonna adjust the send amount from my bus. It's gonna control that volume and the dries all the way down. Just to reiterate, these are all send effects. Now let me solo this one, and this is gonna kill the dry drum loop, and we get to hear what it sounds like. So there's the spring. Let me show you the delay and play around with that a little bit. So that was pretty cool. The mod mod knob made a little bit of a shift in or a little warble in the pattern. Uh, again, this is a tape delay. 
I got the low pass filter all the way down. I wish it actually could go lower at 3K to take off some top end. I rolled up the high pass. Again, just playing with these to show you what's possible. I like that it's all here at my fingertips. And even if I resize this to fit it on my 13 inch MacBook Air, uh, I can still see everything in one window, which is why I like this. So I like how they already designed that this is a two RU panel and this is a two RU panel. So I know I've got four RUs of rack space already to be here. So this is using it and this is what it looks like in practice. Uh, I know I went through that pretty quick, but I wanna show you if you wanted to build something from scratch and we're just gonna put a simple chorus uh, in here and then build a little interface. So I'm gonna to go to my new rack space here called Scratch. And what's cool is that it, this would instantaneously flip over to this sound with any new routing aspects or whatever. Uh, I could actually do something called a variation. Uh, if I uh, right click here and do new variation, I can have all these knobs set and, and basically have a memory or a snapshot of all these knobs are where they're at. So if I have different songs in the set lists, uh, I could have them snap to a certain location and pop around. Uh, there is also a set list feature. So again, this it's really deep uh, <laughs> to what you could get into if you really want to get nerdy and pre-program a show. But I just like a certain set, a uh, certain set of effects or a palette available to me. Um, I act might actually have uh, a long delay versus a quarter note that's like real washed out. I could sub that out for the spring. Lots of opportunities here. But now let's let's build this from scratch. So if I go to scratch, I go to wiring is now blank and it's gonna look for the uh, audio in uh, from your interface and audio out, which in my case is the uh, the Evo 16. Uh, we're just gonna go here and go to audio mixer, actually to media player. I'm gonna drop in that drum loop again from my desktop. So I'm gonna throw that in here and now I'm gonna hit Command P, uh, put in the Tal Chorus. So this is the VST3. And it's pretty simple. It's got volume, dry, wet, and stereo width. So this could be a send effect if you put it on the well, all the way wet, or you could have it uh, blended on something. Cause you can get crazy and even go over here. And like, I like a hall with a chorus after it. And you could click and drag that in, add in those knobs. It's pretty cool. So go back to scratch. I'm gonna connect this here out, this over here so it gets recorded. That's my loop back output so I can uh, hear what's going on. Now I'm gonna drag this over here. So again, it's really simple. I don't have to create a channel, right out to a channel, move it to another channel. Um, it's all right here and available. But let me take a quick screenshot. Look, I need to have volume, dry, wet, stereo width, and then a course selection of one and two. So we're actually gonna add a button. So now we go to a panel, let's make a panel for this. Click on edit, go to shape. Feel a little bit like Bob Ross today. So make it here and kind of, kind of make it that purpley-ish color just for fun. I'm gonna do a black metal knob. These are the ones I like. Make it a little bit smaller. I wanna stack three of them in a row. So copy, paste, copy, paste. And a little pro tip, you can select all three of these, hit T, it'll align all the top, and that's right here. And hit D, it'll distribute it horizontally. So I'm gonna center them up right here. So I kinda like to map out my interface, uh, as actually place all the knobs and buttons, if you will. And then I'm going to add, uh, then I'll map all the parameters. So I actually need three different, um, buttons here because if we go back to wiring and look at this guy i've got the chorus one chorus two you can actually have both on at the same time so i need an on off for both of those and then i need a a, a bypass for the unit entirely so now i'm going to add those go back to edit i want to have a another led button let's make it yellow two yellow ones for the different types of chorus and then I'll make it, I'll make this guy for, is it engaged or not? So just because uh, I'm really anal, I'm gonna center this up. So distribute horizontally, move them here, away we go. Okay, so now that I've got my interface ready, and now I need to start mapping. 
So if I click on it, go down here to the right, I need to go to plugin and select the plugin. And if I renamed it, it would show that here, but I want to now make it volume. And what's cool is here in the caption, it's going to automatically pull in the name of that parameter that I can actually click and say, show value in caption, or I can just look at the knob. In this case, I'm just going to have it pull in the name. So now here, tal chorus, we're going to go to dry wet, go again, tal chorus, the stereo width right now, the stereo is all the way up. We're going to click here, tal chorus and chorus one. And what I like about these buttons is it's automatically a toggle, just switch between minimum and maximum value. So that's here in the value section, it's going to go zero or a hundred. So hundred means it's in. I go here, tal chorus, chorus two, map that. And then lastly, I'm going to go here, tal chorus. And if it's at the top and it's gray, that means it's not a plugin specific parameter. It's a gig performer one. I do want bypass plugin. So I usually like a guitar pedal when the light on light is on, I want the light it to be on right now. If I click it and the light turns on, it's going to actually bypass it, which is reversed. So now if I click on the actual led here, I could go down to value and hit reverse and now it'll be reversed. Okay. So let's go to general, click on edit and now I can actually control what's going on. And one last thing I've added, I added a play stop right here so I could trigger the drum loop. So now let's play around with a little bit. So here's it dry and now let's bring it in. So again, not the most normal thing to do to put a chorus on a drum loop, but just easy for me to trigger here and show you how I was able to make this custom panel from scratch, mapping exactly what we're seeing here in the wiring diagram. Again, you could change the color. You can make these knobs look different. Uh, I like that actually you can go over here to edit. Uh, sorry. I can go over here to edit. And if I, nah, I don't like these black knobs, I can go here, let's make them gold. I can actually drag and drop and replace them, which is kind of fun. Uh, so to make it easy, intuitive, uh, I actually had a question this morning on the Gig Performer community forum and got to an answer really quickly. It's been awesome. So anyway, this is not a sponsored post. I just really like the software. It's been helpful. I'm excited to use it in my upcoming shows uh, as I start to prepare for an upcoming musical act that I'll be mixing. Um, and I don't know what console I'm going to get. So I just want to make sure I have the time-based effects that I want to use ready and at my fingertips. Uh, let me know if this was helpful and you want to see more like this of how I'm using Gig Performer to use any effect that I want, uh, maybe for inline processing and other channels, not just time-based effects. Uh, but again, you can get access to this template that I've built here back at the front of house effects. So you can have this uh, and just swap out the VSTs you want to use and remap the parameters. Uh, anyway, I'm Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time.